Uh, my name is Penny Chisholm and I am an institute professor at MIT. Um, I've been there for 43 years. Uh, over the years, I've taught ecology and um, biological oceanography. I study plankton in the oceans. We do research in my lab. And in addition to in addition to being an accomplished scientist, you're also an accomplished author. Could you tell us uh, about the, the books you've written? Yes, uh, over the years, um, having taught introductory biology um, and teaching students about photosynthesis, I realized that it's a concept that really does not stick with people, even MIT undergraduates. So I decided to partner up with a good friend of mine, Molly Bang, who's an accomplished children's book writer. And we've written a series of books on, called the Sunlight Series on photosynthesis with the hope that if we catch young people, um, that by the time they learn about it more in the upper levels at school, they might actually, it might actually sink in because to me, it's the most important process on the earth. Well, since I became obsessed with photosynthesis, uh, I certainly see the world differently. I look at everything that is green and I'm reminded how all of life essentially on earth depends on that process that's underlying their, their greenness. Um, so I, I, that's one thing that I'm always aware of when I'm walking out in nature. Um, the other thing is I'm constantly reminded that even though nature looks very static, um, that, I mean, we notice that it changes slowly over time, but that every minute of every day, things are dramatically changing. Uh, especially through photosynthesis with gases coming into the plants and coming out of the plants and they're making sugar and things we can't see are eating them. Um, and it's an incredibly dynamic system. Well, obviously I would think, uh, I would say, look at the plants and remember to appreciate them. Uh, without them, there would be no life. I mean, every, everything, all of the food that, that comes on your table started with a plant somewhere. Um, and so they're the, the living things that provide all of the food for everything on earth. So that's, that's the first thing I would say. The other thing, since I'm also obsessed with photosynthesis in the oceans and lakes, is that when you look at water, uh, be it an ocean, a lake, or a puddle, or anywhere, Think about the invisible uh, plants that are there, microscopic plants that are the base of the food web in all aquatic ecosystems. And when you take all of those in the ocean, all the photosynthesis in the oceans, it's actually roughly equal to that on land. So those microbes are playing an incredibly important role in the whole earth system. Well, I think fundamentally one has to understand how the planet works uh, in order to understand what we need to do to maintain it. Um, so I hope that students that are interested will go into the field of ecology and understand uh, the basic functioning of our Earth as a system. And also, through understanding these processes, for example, photosynthesis, if, if, if we could we can't mimic what plants can do. We, we humans, with all of our ingenuity, have not figured out how to engineer artificial photosynthesis. If we could do that, if we could create organic carbon, which is essentially fuel, um, fossil fuels are ancient photosynthesis. So if we could, if we could engineer uh, photosynthesis now, like plants do, uh, we would not have to dig up fossil fuels. We could make our own fuel from artificial photosynthesis. So there's so much to be learned from, from nature and how nature works that we should be trying to mimic because if we wanna be humans on this earth for a long, long period of time, if we start to design our human systems 
as analogous to the way other living systems work, we'll have a more sustainable planet. 